Hey everybody, Languages Lover here and welcome back to my channel. Sorry it's been a while, but yeah, I need to explain myself again, you know, school, work, all that kind of stuff, but anyway, I'm back. And I can guarantee you that won't be my last video for the summer. I have a big project coming up. Some of you may already know what it is, some of you may not, but stick around, it'll be fun. I can guarantee you that. So yeah, like I said, <laughs> Yeah, I'm back and today I have a video that's been long overdue on my YouTube channel and that is a tour, an updated tour of my book collection. And basically the idea for this video came when I was, as I was scrolling down my YouTube channel yesterday, you know, my list of videos, and I actually decided, discovered that my last video of that type was two years ago, aka in 2020. <laughs> And I was like, wow, that was a long time ago. I should probably, you know, make an update. So yeah, and that's when I decided to make that video. And basically, yeah, my last one was in 2020. Now we're in 2023, so it's been almost three years. I checked and it was, I believe, one or two days before 2021 hit. So yeah, almost three years. And yeah, there have obviously been some updates. And I'm actually excited to show them to you. And another major thing that's changed since then is that back then I used to sort my collection, you know, by by language book series, for example, by As each Asimil, each Lonely Planet, and all that kind of stuff. But now to actually uh, make it more fresh, I actually decided to uh, put them in alphabetical order. For example, I have all my Arabic first, then Bulgarian, then Kowland, then Chinese, and etc. So I hope, basically, well, personally, I feel like this is, this feels more fresh, and I hope you guys will feel the same thing, because I was trying to uh, come up with a better way to uh, organize my collection, and it feels also more organized to have them uh, language by language instead of uh, series by series. So yeah, and I hope you guys enjoy. So, but yeah, but before we get started, first off, uh, please hit the subscribe button, turn on the, bo the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new content, and let's get to it. Okay, so here we go. For example, here I have all my Arabic stuff, and I'm just gonna take it slow so that you can guys can see all the neat little updates. Also have this here, l'arabe dans votre poche. Going down, we have some more Arabic here, and then we switch over to a uh, Bulgarian, then Catalan, then we go over to a uh, Chinese. I have more stuff for Chinese, obviously, because it's more popular. Down here, I have two things here. I have Chinese for dummies, and this is to learn characters. I can just, you know, do that just so that you guys can get a better idea. All right, and yeah, as usual, most of my collection is in French, but I do have some books that aren't in French. For example, here we have some more Chinese and uh, Chinese, Croatian, Czech, Danish, Dutch, English. I also have this year and this big book that I bought in New York City the first time I went to uh, New York City. Some more English. And then I have the one book, one finished book that I have. So now let's go over to the uh, second shelf. Over here I have two books in French. So I decided this is my French, my French, ver my French uh, part of my collection. This rear, this here is uh, German. All the German stuff that I have, you may notice that I have a lot, and that's that makes sense because I do like German. And having studied German in college, I. I believe that's like uh, one of the languages for which I have to have the most stuff, you know. So over here we switch to Greek. We got ancient Greek and modern Greek. Over here it ends here. Then we have Hebrew. I also have that right here. Hindi, Hungarian, Irish. Because I was supposed to go to Ireland at some point, but you know, COVID. So yeah, I canceled my trip. Uh, Italian right here hold on okay so we have some more italian here and i do also have a lot of stuff for italian and over here we switch to japanese right here 
Okay, right here, Japanese, Japanese. Then Korean and Latin, right here. So this, nah, that's for Norwegian, actually. We're not there yet. This is Latin. I have the one Malay book that I have. I have Norwegian, and I can show you that one as well. That's from Asimil, a conversation book or a phrase book, if you want to call it that way. Uh, then we have Persian, Polish, Polish, then Portuguese, which was my first language at university, so I have, do have a lot of Portuguese books. And as for that, uh, going down here, another phrase book right here from Ulysse. And I have my Michelle Thomas Portuguese. Yeah, all this uh, the shelf is Portuguese. Right. So, all you know, the classic stuff. Asimil, Lonely Planet. These are some books that I had to uh, read at university. This was Intermediate 1. This was Advanced 2. And this right here, uh, Ecuador, was uh, Advanced 1, basically. Okay, so over here we have some more Portuguese stuff. Then we switch to uh, Romanian. Then Russian. Right here. And these books basically were uh, too big. And that's why I, you know, I couldn't put them at, like that. You know, they're, they were too big. So basically I have um, one for verbs. That's a um, an exercise book from Asimil. And this is another thing that I got. I don't remember where I got it, but I do remember buying it um, in Quebec City. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Let's put it back here, all right. Then we have some more Russian here. And then we switched the enormous span collection of Spanish books that I have. Start right here. These are some uh, books in the Spanish language. Here we have um, another little Asimil book. Mm, the two basic Asimil books for uh, Spanish. Over here we have the three of the El Actual, which is a, um, a resource that I used way back in the Cegep. We have some more Spanish here. And it ends here. And then we switch to uh, Swedish. Sorry about that. Swedish, we have ASML mostly. These are mostly ASML, by the way. Thai, Turkish, Ukrainian, Vietnamese. And then we finally reached the end. And over here, starting here, this is what I call my multilingual collection. So basically, if a book has more than one language in it, I actually put it there. So basically, I do have a lot of the Lonely Planet ones, for example. This one has Hindi, Urdu, and Bengali. We have Western Europe, which has Danish, Dutch, French, German, Italian, Norwegian, Portuguese, Spanish, Swedish, and Turkish. Mediterranean Europe, which has Albanian, Croatian, French, Greek, Italian, Macedonian, Portuguese, Slovene, Spanish, and Turkish. The Middle East, which has a lot of the Arabics, and Farsi, Hebrew, and Turkish. Central Europe, this one doesn't have that many though. Czech, German, Hungarian, Polish, Slovak, and Slovene. Eastern Europe. Uh, Albanian, Bulgarian, Croatian, Czech, Hungarian, Macedonian, Polish, Romanian, Russian, Slovak, and Slovene. Over here, this is a book that I actually bought to uh, practice my German. Deutsch für Ingenieure. And it actually has Greek, Spanish, Polish, and Romanian. I'll take care of that afterwards. And over here, this is where my collection ends. I have... Oops, sorry, I have this little book right here, which is in French. It has French, English, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I have the massive book for which I did a review on. A multilingual review, that is. And this is the uh, Comparative Grammar of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and French. Wonderful book. And I did chat with uh, Mikhail yesterday, and he actually had me updated on when the... Uh, the second book is going to come out, which is a comparative grammar of uh, German, Dutch, and Afrikaans. And he did tell me that it's coming out this year, so be on the lookout for that, actually. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And so, yeah, that's basically it. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you have, give the video a big thumbs up, subscribe. That'd be super awesome, amazing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!